What's up guys, it's Victon. I have a summoner build for you guys in Wolson today. Uh, I do want to do a quick disclaimer. Uh, with the recent patches, there have been some slight buffs to summoners, and a whole lot of people are wanting to try them out. Uh, and they are fun to play for sure, so I wanted to make a build guide, but uh, like I said, I wanted to do a quick disclaimer here. So anything above 160 on my build is really rough. Um, any of the 187 guides that you're seeing out there for summoners, they're 100% all using the trial belt, and some of them are also using that chest piece frost weave or something like that uh, that gives the 100% crit chance as well. So just do note that, that if you see any builds out there doing anything above 160 for summoners, uh, they likely are having some uniques that you have to use. This build that I'm doing here, you do not need those. Obviously, if you do equip those, you'll be able to do the 187s, no problem. Um, and I do have those, and I've tested it. It works, no problem. You could do 187s. Uh, but in this guide specifically, I've went ahead and left those out because I know that they are harder to get, uh, a little bit rarer. So not everybody's going to have those. So I tried to do a baseline build here for you guys. And the highest that I've been able to clear is 160 on this. Uh, and I'm farming 150s, no problem. Um, but like I said, the game the game actually style of how you play this is pretty fun. Uh, so I do, did want to get a build out there because a lot of people have been asking for summoners. So let's go ahead and jump into it. Like I always do, I'm going to roll some gameplay footage in the background so you can see what it looks like as we chat about the build. Okay, so let's first chat about the gear. Now a lot of the gear that you're going to see here is a lot of the same things that we're going to be using on any melee build. Uh, so material damage is what we're going to be focusing on, which is a little bit different than what you might think because they're summons. Uh, but one good thing to know is summons actually do toxic damage as their base damage type. Um, and there's also no real way to scale summon damage right now outside of just material damage. Uh, spell damage doesn't work. Uh, actually, honestly, nothing works besides material damage. So we're going to be wanting to go for material damage. Now you can do spell flat damage added to spells. For example, you can see in my weapon there, Shadow Shadow Sacred. So that does work, um, but nothing on gear pieces like spell damage or, or anything like that, or cult damage, that definitely doesn't work because it's toxic, toxic damage. Now on the weapon here, pretty basic weapon, uh, nothing too crazy. I have two stats for flat to add it to spells. Um, the occult ailment chance score I have on there is for the damage that I'm dealing with anomaly and it's just helping to apply some stacks uh, and obviously some life leech as well is pretty big if you have a life leech on your weapon it allows you to not have to get the life leech node on the tree which saves you one point so that's pretty nice uh, one thing to note, and we'll go over it in the gym section as well but I do have one gem for sacred damage added to spells and we'll talk about that in the skill tree but that is important uh, we do need at least on your gear somewhere one sacred damage added to spells uh, so that we can be killing monsters when they go below 15% HP but again we'll go over that in the skill tree now on the other pieces here we are picking up the note on the tree that doubles your all resistance score from your chest piece and from your helmet so you definitely need to make sure you get all resistance score chest piece and helmet uh, with that Definitely good to have a chest piece that has some transfer time reduction on there. Uh, more importantly, I would say, is the cooldown decrease from skills. Same with the helmet. Uh, on mine, I don't have the transfer time on the helmet, so that's going to be an upgrade for me if I do find that. Again, material damage, if you can get it. Wisdom is also good. Uh, ferocity, you can see on my helmet, doesn't really benefit us that much. So I would say, if you, anything, as far as base stat points, Wisdom or toughness is pretty good. The shoulders and the arms, you're going to be wanting to go for rage and willpower cost reduction, just so it's a little bit easier to cast your spells, uh, and also material damage. Uh, another good thing to note here is any passive dodge chance that you can get on your on your gear. If you can get maybe three or four items that have passive dodge chance, it's actually pretty good, and it goes quite a ways, uh, especially when we're going block chance on this build so having some block chance and also some dodge chance makes you pretty pretty tanky uh, and you can tell here that I'm also going for block chance on my gems again we'll go over that in the gems section but this build does have block chance even though we're using a staff on the tree we're actually picking a note up that lets you block with a staff stat priority we're gonna want 100% toughness and the reason for that is again None of the other base stats is going to scale or summons damage. Uh, so just being tanky for us so that we don't die really goes a long way. And also on the tree, we'll talk about it. 
uh, but we're picking up three nodes that actually decrease our life and make our summons tankier. So just giving, getting as much toughness as possible, getting as much life or resistance as possible on our gear helps quite a bit just because we're getting that reduction. So I would absolutely go 100% toughness. All right, with gear out of the way, let's go ahead and chat about the passive skill tree. Now the way Wilson is going right now, a lot of the skill trees you're gonna see are actually very similar. Uh, and this build is no exception. The reason being because in the end game, there are certain nodes that you absolutely have to take uh, in order to survive and to do decent damage. Uh, so what also I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna go in the order of what I would pick up is if I'm leveling this build as I go. So first thing that you're gonna wanna get is all of these right here. These have to do with ailments. In the early game, it does a lot of damage. So first thing you wanna get it right here is just ailment chance score. After that, you're gonna wanna move up to here and grab ailment stacks inflicted, additional ailment stacks inflicted. Don't worry about that damage decrease. It's almost unnoticeable. Um, next, you're gonna wanna get this. Essentially, you're just getting a damage buff per how many ailment stacks you have on enemies. Uh, from there, you're gonna come up here. You're gonna get an additional ailment stack. And after that, you're gonna get this three. So these three nodes equal to 100% chance to multiply the number of ailment stacks inflicted. So uh, very big, these three nodes. After that, you're gonna grab this node right here. Uh, it's not a huge node. Essentially, it just makes your ailment stacks able to crit. Now, we're not critting that often, but it does help a little bit. Uh, so after that, you're gonna pick up this node right here, which is the absolute biggest node on the tree for damage. Basically, the way it works is after a 1.5 seconds delay, if an enemy is, has been inflicted by a stasis, they take an additional 100% of the damage. So essentially, it's just doubling your damage. And we're going to be having stasis on the mobs 100% of the time with this build. Uh, so it's essentially just a double damage. And then after that, there's just an additional 20% here. So a little bit more than double damage. Uh, from there, we're going to pick these nodes up right here. So anytime you see a maximum ailment stack, that's a pretty big buff to you. Uh, it's just allowing you to do a whole lot more damage uh, in between right here is this it's a, a decent oops it's a decent defense node basically what it does is it splits the damage into two different ticks of damage uh, and the way that this is really good is if you have spell leech and the reason that's good is because if that first tick happens uh, you're likely going to be able to leech that life back in the time that that second tick of damage will have occurred. Uh, so it's splitting up the damage and in between the damage being dealt to you, you're actually able to leech life back. Uh, so it works pretty good as a, a defensive mechanism right here. And then after that, just another maximum ailment stack. So from there, we're going to want to come down here and just pick this up. One thing I would note, uh, again, global life leech is absolutely huge. But if you have it on your weapon, you don't need to really pick this up. Uh, most weapons will have a 5% life leech roll. You just want to make sure that your weapon does have it. If it does not have that, absolutely pick this up. If you're rolling around with no life leech, uh, you're gimping yourself quite a bit. So from there, we're going to want to go down here and pick this up. Basically what this does is it kills enemies instantly below 15% of their maximum HP. And we're picking this up in order to get bosses and champions have the same effect. Uh, so a whole lot of damage, especially in end game, when the bosses have so much HP, it saves you quite a bit of time. Uh, from there, we're gonna wanna get this, which is just a little bit of a damage increase, 25% damage increase. Uh, again, we're gonna have 100% stasis uptime on our mobs. Uh, so it's a, just a damage increase pretty much 100% of the time. But this one behind it is a pretty big uh, damage boost as well. So again, we wanna be inflicting stasis as much as possible. So I would be getting Aether damage on your weapon. So Aether damage to spell on your weapon, on your catalyst. And if you don't get it on your weapon or your catalyst, you're definitely gonna wanna throw flat Aether damage to spells on a gym slot in your weapon so that we can be triggering that. So from there, we're gonna wanna be going down here and a lot of this is defensive. So for the end game, mid to late to end game, we're gonna start coming down here to get all these defensive nodes. A whole bunch of these nodes right here you'll actually notice are just health and all resistance. Again, all resistance is very important in this game uh, to be taking the least amount of damage possible, especially in the end game. Uh, I would come up here first and get these nodes right here. This little passive tree is for summons. 
The issue here with this passive trio, and there's been a whole bunch of testing, you can see like 15% damage dealt to summons or by summons. Uh, the issue is almost all of these nodes don't work. Fantastic, right? Uh, so we're going to skip all these. I would definitely pick these up once they start working, but I'll do a, a, an update guide when that happens. Uh, but go down here, just go straight rushing down to this, and these nodes are absolutely huge. You do lose some of your HP, but your summons take a whole lot less damage. So just in this one node, they take 25% less damage. Right here, they take another 20% less damage. And here, they take another 20% less damage. So they're not dying. Um, and it's sometimes hard to tell in this game when your summons have died because their AI is pretty crappy. Um, so when they don't die, it, it does a whole lot more damage to your build because they're doing damage. Uh, and don't worry about the fact that you're losing HP. You still have a good bit of HP with this build, and you have so much defenses in this build uh, with your summons leeching life and giving it to you uh, that you really don't need it. This is the, definitely the tankiest build that I've, I've built so far, and I literally never die on this build, even with these um, reductions here. So after that, same thing kind of in all the builds. You're going to start getting uh, hit pretty hard in the end game. So we're going to come down here, and we're going to grab this. Uh, this is the same node that you get in every single build. Uh, basically what it does is for your chest piece, you absolutely want an all resist chest piece. Uh, with that, you're going to be doubling your all resist on your chest piece. It's a huge survivability boost. And after that, the same concept, but for your helmet. So again, you're going to want a an all resist helmet. So it's doubling that and you're getting more all resist. From there, I would be coming up and grabbing this. Uh, added block chance so basically if you're using a staff or if you're using a catalyst which you will be in this build um, you can't block unless you get this build so get this build built get this node so that you can block uh, it's a six percent right here and then as you'll notice later in the guide i'm going to be showing the gems uh, and that's why it's very important to get this node because we're going to be applying a lot of block chance gems as well uh, to get as much block chance as we can uh, right here is actually a pretty decent damage boost um, so physical resistances will be pretty high with this build just because we're focusing a lot on defenses so with this you're actually going to be getting about 50 to 70 percent additional damage uh, so pretty significant and that crit chance uh, deduction is, is nothing we're not going to be going for crit chance on this build so don't worry about that from there you're going to come down here and you're going to grab this anytime that you block you're going to be getting some additional all rest score uh, very big we're very much focusing on all res it's pretty much our biggest defensive um, statistic that we're going for so this is pretty huge uh, no need to get this probably until the late game like i said this is one of the end nodes that you'll get i think i am at this point at level 75 um, i will post in the wilson universe link a full level 90 tree uh, so you'll kind of see what I have at level 78 versus a full level 90. Anything after what I have here is what you would be wanting to go for after level 78. Okay, next let's talk about gems. Now like I've been mentioning, you do want one gem in your weapon slot that does sacred damage added to spells. And the reason being, again, because anytime a mob falls below 15% HP, it's going to instantly kill them. And the reason that is really big is because of bosses. Once that boss hits 15% HP, it instantly dies. That saves you a whole lot of time uh, and does a whole lot of damage. So after that, we're going to be wanting to go with, you can do two things. I went with Aether Damage to spells for the other two slots on my weapon so I could have the most uptime for Stasis. So it's going to be adding that double damage through the node on the tree that adds double damage, time which cannot heal. Um, but you can also go for shadow damage if you want that and what shadow damage does is when it applies the ailment stacks It just increases the damage uh, So either of those work. I went with the aether damage so I could have stasis up as much as possible Now chest pants and helmet you're gonna go for block chance uh, With this build I'm getting up to 100% block chance so that coupled with the amount of all resistance I have uh, and the summons being able to leech life for me I literally again I literally never die on this build so uh, rings amulet and belt is going to be the same for every single build out there right now transfer time decrease between willpower and rage okay so skills now this is a little bit different than some of my other guides because on my other guides I've never used a duplicated skill uh, it's very important on this build to duplicate your liver mortis skill and the mages do a whole bunch of damage, so we want three of them. 
Uh, just having one is not going to get the job done. So you want all three. And in order to actually get all three, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to do that. So you're going to want to go to this guy right here in the town. And then you're going to want to go to the Interact Laboratory. There's two different uh, quests here that you're going to want to complete. Upgrade the lab. So you're going to do that two times. You're going to finish the project. And once both of those are finished, it's going to give you the ability to duplicate skills. So go down to this chick right here. And as you can see up here, duplicate skill, duplicate skill. So we're going to pick one as an example here. So you would click it and then it would give you this option right here to duplicate. And then once you duplicate it, it's going to be in this section now, see? And then you can level it up if you want or you can just level it up normally. Now, if you duplicate it again, you would go down here and you would duplicate it again. Uh, and then it would be in this section. Now, once you've duplicated it all three times, you would go up to here just to your regular skill tree and you can see up here the original skill duplicated and duplicated and you're just going to click on it you're going to select what you want and you select put it onto your bar so like for example this is the number one and then we're going to go up to the second duplicated and then it's going to change it down here so you'll just drag that over here and there you go so and then same concept for the third one and you're going to drag that over here so that's all three of your liver mortises duplicated now with the liver mortises, we're going to want the mage variant. Uh, the mage variant does the second most damage, but it single fires on a specific target. So they're all going to focus fire on the target uh, with the hungering swarm. Uh, the regular liver mortise is more of a tank, doesn't do as much damage. The melee variant does actually the most damage, but its AI is really, really poop uh, and it's going to be not even attacking stuff half of the time so definitely want to go with the mage uh, and after that all we're doing is really just getting damage increases from the skill tree uh, we're also going to be going with anomaly pretty much like you do in every single build um, and with that all of the skills that we typically do are pretty much the same we just want to be applying stasis and we want to be aoe controlling them and grouping them up into one specific spot so that we can um, AOE them down and it's really nice to group them up because our hungering swarm shots do pierce so we're piercing and if they're all grouped up together it's going to be doing a lot of damage uh, so talking about hungering swarm uh, the biggest thing on there is the pierce uh, and adding additional hungering swarms uh, to it and then after that same concept with just getting more damage uh, and I've run with Annihilation. Like I've been mentioning, there's no real way to scale the damage of your summons. Uh, they do toxic damage, so the only way that I've really found that kind of helps scaling their damage is going with Annihilation and turning Annihilation into a toxic skill and then getting the passive that allows you to deal more damage with Toxic and Aether. Uh, if you spray the enemies plus your uh, summons with the aether beam then it actually gives them an increase and it also gives you an increase as well so they're gonna be doing a little bit more damage uh, but just make sure that you actually touch them with the beam uh, as well as the enemies so the way I do that is I kind of position myself in a way that I'm either behind them or I'm in front of them and aiming at the enemies as well as uh, my summons so that it's hitting them as well and they're getting that buff that's giving them extra toxic and aether damage and that's really the only way that you can scale the summons right now sadly that really covers it guys there's not much to this build guide just because there really isn't that much you can do with summons right now uh, scaling for damage for summons is absolutely broken uh, none of the passives on the skill tree work for it and nothing on gear works for summons so it's pretty awful but you can still definitely make it work. Like I said, I'm doing 140s, 150s, and pushing it to 160s. And if you have the trial belt, you can obviously do 187s with this. So if you like the gameplay style of summoners, uh, this definitely works and you can definitely get it going. And as they patch stuff in the future, I'm sure a lot of this stuff will start working and it'll make it just even stronger. So if you guys did like this content and you want more build guides just like this, feel free to check out my channel. I have a couple more already posted and a couple more coming. Uh, this is a newer channel, so if you guys did like it, uh, I would definitely greatly appreciate a like and a subscribe. Uh, feel free to throw a comment down there. If you guys are doing something different that you think is working, let me know. Uh, and if I need to, I can do an updated video as well. So that's pretty much all I got, guys. Y'all have a good rest of your day, and I will see y'all in the next one.